Tick-borne illnesses are on the rise in Canada. And for more on what you need to know and how to protect yourself, we're joined by infectious disease specialist, Dr. Isaac Bogosh. And first off, Dr. Bogosh, why are we seeing an increase in Lyme disease and other tick-borne illnesses? Hey, good morning, Carolyn. Yeah, unfortunately, we are seeing a rise in these in Canada and elsewhere around the world. Sadly, this is one of the impacts of climate change. For example, the winters are a little bit shorter. They're not as cold. These tick populations can survive in more northern uh, regions and they can thrive in a larger geographic area. And of course, wherever the ticks survive and thrive, tick-borne illnesses thrive and survive. So we are going to see more of these in Canada. And we actually have been seeing a rise in cases over the last decade in Canada. All right, let's talk signs and symptoms, if we could, Dr. Bogosh. What are they and how can we best protect ourselves? Yeah, so Lyme can have many signs and symptoms. Some people have a fever. One of the classic uh, signs is this target-like rash. Looks like a bullseye. It doesn't have to, but it commonly does. Um, and some people have some headaches, some joint pains. Occasionally, uh, people might have a, actually a weakness on one side of their face. Again, if anyone thinks they have Lyme or a Lyme illness or a tick-related illness or even a tick bite that you need help removing, it's, it's worthwhile seeking medical care. There's lots of uh, providers across the country that know how to deal with this. And uh, unfortunately, we're going to have more practice dealing with it because we are seeing more cases. And that's actually what I was going to ask you about. What should we do if we get bitten or we see a tick embedded in our skin? What should we do immediately? And also, not all tick bites lead to illness, right? Right. That's a great point. So for starters, there's a lot of different types of ticks in Canada. Uh, there's one called the black-legged tick. That's the tick that, that can cause uh, or transmit Lyme. Certainly not all tick bites lead to an infection. That's a very important point. But we know we have a lot of the ticks that transmit Lyme in the country. We have between two to 3,000 diagnosed cases of Lyme in the country per year. That's probably an under, underestimate as well. So if you get bit by a tick, the, the simple thing to do is to remove it as quickly as possible. They're actually not that hard to remove. You get fine tweezers, you pull straight up, you've got to grasp as close to the uh, skin uh, and to the tick as, as possible so that you don't leave any parts behind. There's some very good videos online, for example, on the Public Health Agency of Canada's webpage demonstrating proper techniques to remove a tick. And I, I don't want to ignore, uh, 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 Jeff had a really good question earlier. What do you do to prevent this? I think that was a great point that I, I unfortunately glossed over a second ago. You know, listen, th we know these ticks typically live in uh, high grasses and wooded areas. I think we've got to recognize that we've got the best summers in Canada. People should go outside, enjoy themselves, have a wonderful time. Just recognize that there's ticks out there and that we, we can take simple precautions to uh, avoid them. You can put on uh, insect repellent. You can wear long pants. Obviously, when it's you know 35 degrees outside, you're not going to wear long pants and a long sleeve shirt. So you can, you can uh, do tick checks when you come back inside. And, and sometimes it's helpful to have another person look at you know the back of your legs if you're not able to see that area as well to look for a tick. And if there's a tick there, you can simply remove it. Okay, talking about prevention, Dr. Bogosh, there was once a vaccine for Lyme disease, but it is no longer used in humans? Yeah, unfortunately it isn't. This was a vaccine that uh, was discontinued in 2002. It was called Limerix. It was actually a pretty effective vaccine, anywhere between 70 to 90% effective in preventing Lyme disease. There was a few uh, you know, issues that just led to its discontinuation. Uh, for starters, there wasn't as much Lyme around at that time. Uh, there were some theoretical concerns that the uh, vaccine may have led to uh, arthritis, which didn't end up being uh, found. It wasn't founded in the end. Uh, but based on um, a reduced market, uh, th this, this vaccine was, was discontinued. So that's, that's too bad. We could really use one right now. And there's, has there, there's been progress on a new one, isn't there? Absolutely. There's a few different products that are in development. Some have finished phase one clinical trials. And remember, there's phase one, phase two, and phase three clinical studies. Each one is bigger than the last, looking at safety, looking at uh, efficacy. Uh, some are in phase three clinical studies. Some are in phase one and phase two. Very, very promising products uh, going through these clinical trials. I wouldn't be surprised if we see one in the next couple of years. And it is needed. We're going to see more and more Lyme, not just in, in Canada, but in other parts of the world. 
All right. Before we run out of time, Dr. Bogosh, I saw this health headline yesterday. I wanted to ask you about it, and, it, and it's with regards to cervical cancer screening for women in Canada. And I saw that some provinces are replacing the old PAP test for HPV tests. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, this is a pretty interesting development. HPV for people that might not know stands for human papilloma virus. It's a very common virus. There's many different types of HPV. Some of them can lead to cervical cancer and other cancers of, for example, the head and neck. That's why it's so important for people to get that HPV vaccine because the cancer rates have dramatically dropped. And of course, we have to screen for cervical cancer. Uh, the traditional pap test brushes the cervix and you can look at the specific cells for precancerous lesions or cancerous uh, changes. What HPV does is it's still, you still have to get a sample, but it does a PCR test and looks for the virus. So if you see the virus, you can actually detect the virus even before you start to see the precancerous or cancerous changes. It's probably more sensitive than the traditional pap test. And I think we'll likely start to see a pivot in that direction. All right. We're going to have to leave it there. Dr. Bogosh, good to see you as always, our friend. Thank you so much for this. My pleasure. Have a great day.